Wrestling Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I suppose you're all wondering why I called you here. The answer is the reviewer is someone in this room. I, I wonder who it could be. There's only three of us. Oh, I'm talking about the third person. Jacob! Hey everyone. So there's a review. So, so you're saying that there's a review between the three of us? Or maybe just one of us is a real reviewer and the others are just posers. Oh no. We we po- posers are not cute. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review um, My Little Pony, Tell Your Tale, Season 1, Episode 12. The game is a hoof. And if you're probably wondering, why are we skipping Episode 11? Um, according to EQD's episode guide, this is supposed to come here before uh, 11. Because 11, uh, you know what? I hate it when episode gets out of order, but I'm just learning to live with it. So yeah, we're doing this. This is a case of why six afraid of seven. <laughs> you know why, Norman? Why? Cause seven, eight, nine. Oh no. Um. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a there was a follow up to that one because. Um, why is ten afraid of? Uh, and, and why is ten afraid? Why? Mm. Because it's between nine and eleven. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not endorsing that. Yeah, no, I, I just heard it. I was stupid. It was, where you? Uh, where was I again? Oh. Uh, trying not to get cancelled? <laughs> yeah, trying to. Oh boy, yeah. Um, Today, the game is a hoof. Yes, uh, that one. So, uh, in this episode, Zips interrupts her friends for movie night because something of hers got stolen and she wants to find out who did it. Who done did it? Just who? Hmm? Nothing. So, anywho, um, before we start, uh, Silver, what do you think? Well, this one's pretty funny. Uh, just watching all the different scenarios unfolding where how Zip remembers while the others do not, uh, or they remember in a different way. And I think Pip was probably the funniest uh, flashback. But then at least it creates the surprisingly high-tech visor that will become one of uh, Zip's most relied upon gadgets throughout the series. So, a bit more relevant than the last episode, for Uh, which I'm grateful. You would say that there's a lot of of substance in this one? Yes. All right, then. Um, Jacob, what about you? Well, uh, this is the episode which basically introduces a certain gadget that uh, Zip's gonna be using throughout the entirety of uh, Make or Mark. And let's just say that the first impressions of this, of her uh, thing that she has going on being a detective is not particularly, uh, well, on the upside. Uh, Alright. <clears throat> and as for me... Ah, uh, this episode was a lot of fun. Uh, this episode was a lot of fun to watch because um, episodes where we get to see the main character be involved with the story is fun. And yeah, getting flashback of how things are told from her perspective versus uh, in reality is interesting. <laughs> and yeah, a, a lot of fun things happen. So um, I think I, for this one, I think I'm gonna go for a traditional way of doing things where we go scene by scene. Anywho, uh, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go do so. 
Welcome back. So we start off the episode with the main characters, the, the ponies, watching a movie. I, I think the movie is a parody or a... Re- I want to say parody. Um, a pony fight version of uh, Frankenstein. And yeah, everybody... <laughs> uh, we see Hitcher being afraid. Uh, hmm... I, I, I um, this, this. He gets the short end of the stick again. Not really, uh, because we do see <coughs> Pip and Sunny uh, trembling in their hooves. But yeah, but he's wrapped up in his blankie. Uh, again, show him to be the most hysteric prone of the group. But at the same time, too, when you go watch a horror movie. Personally, for me, I am not a horror movie fan, and I, I tend not to go watch it. So, if I have a blankie, I would use it. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's me. I, I can relate with him on this one. But, yeah. But to be honest, if we do see Sheriff Hitch being all serious like when work and when at home, he's afraid to watch the movie, I would say that that gives him a lot more personality but since he since he's always like this it just shows him in a how's it it just shows him in a different light where yeah he, he's just played for laughs and that's very unfortunate so anyway um they watch the movie and suddenly Zip pops in and says Haha I need to stop the movie because my sunglasses are missing and one of you did it and I'm accusing you all of stealing my glasses dun, dun, dun. Who done it? And yeah I have to say that's not cool accusing your friends of stealing your of stealing that, that, that ain't cool yo Jacob what, what do you what do you have to say man yeah not the good first impression as I said earlier especially considering that Zip is supposed to be the one that uh, supposed to get to the bottom, but she's almost immediately accusing her friends. And later you're misinterpreting of what she uh, saw. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, not a good start. All right, then. Uh, Silver? <laughs> well, like I say, I mean, there's always that whodunit aspect. We kind of got... This is similar to Mystery on the Friendship Express. At least that one was more in fun. That... Yeah, and everybody was guilty in the end. Although <laughs> the question still remains how did Applejack manage to get a bite and never got caught? <laughs> well, she didn't. That's on the cutting room floor. Uh, see, the thing is, they, they don't, they, Applejack didn't really want to reveal her powers because she can manipulate time and she just frees time to do whatever she wants. Or what? Does she have the uh, Does she have the power of the Zabado? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and think about it. She's always the background well, pony. Nobody expects the background pony. And she's a nurse pony. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but very good. we should also we should also play tribute. They did the. Uh, the mugshot meme before Ken and Barbie made it cool. That, that is true. And talking about mugshots, right? Look at the shadows behind um, the ponies. Um, well, I, I'm just seeing, yeah, behind the ponies, uh, you see a changeling like shadow and a really tall unicorn shaped figure. And I'm, I'm guessing that could be a figure of Nightmare Moon. That's fascinating. I don't see changeling. I see a unicorn and a, a Pegasus, which probably suggests that they got this from Sh- uh, Hitch's office at a discount as he was throwing out all the racist stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes more sense because when I say 
change thing because I saw the wing shape. And yeah, n- now it makes perfect sense why there's uh, Unicorn and Pegasus. Yeah. G5 start you terrible. <clears throat> so yeah, um, we, we see that everybody gets mugshot and uh, what you call this? Uh, uh, Zipier is accusing everyone of stealing her stuff <coughs> and just getting, uh, or just trying to get down to the bottom line or trying to see who's who done it. And we we get to see her bedroom slash office. If I'm not mistaken, her bedroom is or the bedroom is an open. Bedroom, right? Where everybody can see everybody's bed. Yes. Huh. All right then. So she needs tidying up. Yes. But it it shows her that hey, um, I'm doing detective work. I'm, uh, I have my stuff and yeah, I have my um board to see who who done it. And the way that she retells stories, like, ah, oh, I was walking with Izzy um, and Hitch. And Hitch says, oh, it's so bright. I wish I had my sunglasses, but no, I'll steal yours. Ha 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 ha. And Hitch just says, that didn't happen. <laughs> and just this, oh. that. I had my own glasses all along. Ha ha. Yes, Albert? You say something? Nah. All right. So, and this happens a lot because uh, we, we see that what, um, with uh, Pip, um, oh no, you accused me and one of the lines that Zip says that a function over style and she was a caps and they went to the past to say oh this is what happened because one of my machine malfunctioned and I had to use the glasses to protect my eyes from soap which technically doesn't work that way because it's not sealed but let's say yes yeah well, it at least keeps a majority of the water out of your eyes. Would you, would you rather have a few suds or a deluge? Okay, got me there. Got me there. But we we do we do see um, the machine malfunction and Pip just borrows zip sunglasses to stop the machine. But at the same time, too. Um, device that Pip has in her store is very how do I put this technologically advanced do you think that Easy made it for her or is mm, doesn't no one go ahead Jakob go ahead I don't know maybe it's the product of what was the company called again that was previously designed for uh, anti outsider products from Airtime Bay? Uh, what's her name again? Uh, Phyllis? Yeah, Phyllis? Yeah, maybe her company designed it now that, she, that uh, she's out of business. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Silver, what do you oh, think? Th- yeah, the name of the place was Cantor Logic. Cantor Logic. Wow, that's fun. That's a, that's a fun title. That's a fun company name. But I don't think this is one of Izzy's creations because usually she unicycles, takes parts from older stuff to make new. This all looks pretty freshly made and goes freshly out of control. Mm, so probably from Cantor Cycle? 
Cantor logic? Oh, sorry, Cantor logic, yeah. Quite possibly. Hmm. So yeah, um, she managed to stop it, and the day is saved once again by Pip putting on sunglasses. And is a Zip just accuses her for stealing it because you like it. And Pip just says, no, man. I, it, it clashes with my style, plus I have a bunch of sunglasses over there. Why, why would I steal yours? <clears throat> and then we go to Sunny. Sunny, you stole my glasses because you work in the Shake Shack and you... Uh, the day is hot and you need your sunglasses. And the shutdown was pretty epic where she has her own sunglasses on the ready. So no, I I ain't stealing your things. And haha, she is a boss. Even with the shake. How did she make that so fast? She has on standby, but really she's telling she's telling Zip, you can make like my shake and suck it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm just imagining them doing the gen the the, the generation X, hand thing. <laughs> oh boy. And last but not least is Izzy, where she looks guilty. Oh no. Shifty eyes, shifty eyes. Yeah, she's been taking her measurements and whatnot. Oh no. And so on. Like, what? Well, well, why are you guilty? Well, what are you guilty for? And this is a very fun chase scene where, haha, I'll use paper to blind you. And she runs down the stairs. Um, Zip here is smart enough to jump out the window and fly through the front door. And in the end, um, Izzy is just wrapping her things and giving Zip a present, which kind of is escalate the moment pretty fast and when she opens it is a brand new pair of really cool visors and zip is not mad anymore and she's happy and thankful so i'm just going to ask for you guys opinion silver what do you think well here i said that uh her that izzy's work in unicycling always looks a bit hodgepodge, but these are pretty streamlined. So I have to, and she's also got quite the electrical engineering ability. So I'm wondering if she found a prototype from Canada Logic that uh, she spruced up with zip in mind. That is true, that's one theory. Um, or, or she's just a genius and doesn't really show it. Well, geniuses often do view the world a different way. Yeah, but the her, her things are what? Night vision, uh, infrared, and um, x-ray. Like, wow. Uh, next you'll be telling me that she could shoot laser beams out of her eyes. You know, she does kind of have a cyclops look. I know. Somehow best X-Men now. What? Wasn't she always... Oh no! That was oh, Logan. Oh no! That was Logan. Yeah, everybody. There was a time everybody hated Cyclops. Oh uh, yep. But before, now he's the best. When when did that happen? X Men ninety seven. <laughs> ah. Some. Um, we we regale you with tales of X Men ninety seven later. But um, Jacob, what do you think? Well, I do, I do wonder if there was any magic involved in this, because considering the design, well, the mare string sort of looks like the... It's got the same appearance, uh, high-tech-wise, as, as just like the mare string does. So I'm wondering about that. The mare string? That's the camper minivan thingy? Yeah. Yep. Ah. Hmm. And he's run by magic? No problem, not. I don't know. Wait, do you mean the mare stream? Yeah. Well, considering it was just a broken down trolley before uh, Zip and Easy fixed it up. It could be technology, I don't know. Uh, like, 
to say that technology doesn't exist in this universe is not true because we have cell phones. But at the same well, time... Uh, I, I, I'm not sure who's, uh, who, who claimed that there's no technology in this world because, well, uh, Pegasi are the exact uh, antithesis, antithesis to that. Eh, not sure. And for a while, so were Earth ponies. Mm-hmm. I mean, but, more than tech. But not the unicorns. <laughs> yeah, but... The... Now, now here's... <laughs> Now, now here's where the real question is because we know that Pip made the visor and that's really advanced. So Silver's theory of Pip just found something from Cantor Cantor Logic, was it? Cantor Logic. Yeah, Cantor Logic is viable where oh, I just found this and I just push it up. Makes sense. But I, deep in deep down in my heart I really want easy to be the technological genius that she is. Well, I mean, they're not mutually exclusive. She could have found it, and because she's an electrical genius, she recognizes what it could do. Possible. I, I like that theory. Yeah. Yeah, probably um, the initial design was, oh, yes, you can... You can just put put this on and look cool. Maybe it has AR feature, but she made it into a all-in-one device. So yeah, much cool. But anywho, um, Pip uh, shows it. Sorry, Zip shows it up to everybody, and everybody says it's cool. Yeah, the the glass is cool. Uh, and she. Slip and fell on her bed because a pile of paper made her slip and she fell down. Um, when she fell down, she heard a crack under her pillow and those were her glasses or sunglasses. Oh no. So real question is, I under the pillow. Why not? I'm, Things get shuffled around. I mean, as someone who has a pretty messy home, I can empathize with Zip. Understandable, but you wouldn't put your important items under a pillow, especially one that's fragile. I mean, you not probably... intentionally, anyway. Not intentionally, but these things can just happen. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but her glasses being broken is not a problem because... Easy said she can fix it. And I do wonder what she's going to do with them after she fixed it. And the rest of the group are just Ah you you, you wasted our movie time, you now now we need to resub to Netflix and re rent the movie. And episode ends. So um final pass I guess. Jacob, what about you? What do you have to say? Well, this last part pretty much uh, uh, kind of brought it down. Because, uh, well, the, the whole defining trait that uh, was actually going to come out in the make or mark is that uh, was it supposed to be this uh, character who's uh, obsessed, or at least she's supposed to be a good detective. And then you get to this part where... I don't know. Where? She can't re- she can't deduce properly, and she's well, she's basically pulling a pinky pie when quickly accusing others of well, stealing. Even though she's got literally no proof, or she's mis uh, misheard or mischaracterized what they said. So yeah, mm. not particularly good setup for the character's uh, main thing. All right, all right. And Silver, what about you? Well, I thought it was fun. I mean, it's it's short, so it's just quick little punchy uh, misremembering or shutting down 
uh, Zip's accusations. Sonny gets the biggest shutdown slap, though I'm uh, very much a fan of Pip and her crises of soap. <laughs> and plus, we're introduced to a piece of tech that will be used throughout the series, so at least this one has some level of impact. All right, all right, that's good. As for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I, I do like the quote-unquote detective or um, mystery of it, but like what Jacob said, not a really good first impressions for the detective. Um, she, she ain't no Conan, or Detective Conan to be exact. But all in all, it was fun and entertaining. I I do like the idea of Easy being a technological <laughs> genius where she can just build anything and it works. Who knows? Who knows? I I haven't seen all the series yet. Probably she'll build something that's really awesome. I'm trying to remember. Did Easy did anything in the movie to fix the problem where the machine got out of control? No, yes? Easy. Yeah. Or was it Zip that just flew over and took control? Well, Zip usually flies the airstream, so... Mm. That's her favorite, but we can cover that... On a later date. Yeah, well, yeah. who knows? Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. No problem. Then. But yeah, overall, a eh, fun episode. And the glasses were... A fun addition that you guys and I think I remember a bit that made a comeback. So that's cool. That's cool. So anywho, uh, that's it for this week. So you, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsorgmail.com or you can reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show and my personal Twitter account is at Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? <laughs> Uh, on Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find my weekday puns channel on YouTube. And you'll see me at Everfree Northwest August 23rd through the 25th. Awesome, awesome. Go check him out, guys. And also, um, Everfree Northwest is a fun convention from what I've heard. And they've been on for almost a decade now, right? They're probably the largest running convention at this point. Yeah, they even lasted longer than BronyCon. Uh, BronyCon's timing was was almost prophetic. Mm. Ah, but well, now it's every enough Western to rise up. Ah. Anyway, um, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakov on Torkad, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tumor Rising, you can find it on Pinfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the Tales of the Ashes.com. Some awesome, go do so, guys. And. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. Links will be in the show notes. And if you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you will get a week's early access to review discussion podcast exclusive <coughs> and deleted content. And here's thank you from me. I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also Master of Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Zissi Vakwil. I'm Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya! Adios! Bye bye! So the reviewers were us all along! If you can call this a review! Aha! Ah! We're enthusiasts we review the episodes or shows with gumshoe yes three or perhaps the real reviewers were the friends we made along the way ah, that's also true and I really appreciate that 